Um, all right, man. So I hit you up. I texted you. I said, hey, what's up, man? Let's talk about digital selling. Uh, let's mm -hmm. talk about, um, you know, what you're seeing, et cetera. Mark said all good. Mark, thank you. Appreciate you, man. Um, so we're going to talk about that. I've got some questions. Teams put together some questions. We can just have like more of a conversation. Are you cleared for golf, by the way? Are you out of the clear? Um, yes, I officially out of the clear quarantine over. So we'll get out there this week for sure. All right. All right. I'll hit you up separately about that. Okay. So, yeah. so for everyone out there again, and I was teeing up the topic before I brought you in, you know, um, everyone now, this idea of digital selling, it's almost kind of silly, honestly, like, to think about it. Like, well, of course this is what we're doing. Um, but what I'm seeing is that, you know, are we really elevating our, the customer experience in this new world or are we just kind of adapting things that we've done before to this new world and seeing these like okay results around selling? And so what I wanted to do is really pick your brain as someone who's in the team, managing hundreds of people or in the trenches, making it happen. And, and you know, obviously I'm talking to lots and lots of sales leaders about what they're doing and just have a conversation with you so other people can learn uh, how to keep people engaged. Um, and so my, my first question for you, man, because you know, I know you're, you're, you love the, you love the energy the being in the pit, being with the team, making it happen. And so what was the first challenge you faced in kind of this move digital and this move to selling, you know, selling over zoom or even, you know, getting people engaged. So internally or externally. So internally. like with my yeah, own yeah, with the team, yeah. Yeah. So with, with the team, it really, it took actually about about two and a half, almost three months before we actually ran into, I would say our first real challenge of being remote, right? Cause like my teams was, were inside anyway, right? I have, that's all I've ever done for the past yeah. like 10 years, right? Like, so th the transition to digital selling to me is like, wait, what have y'all been doing? Like, this is what we do. <laughs> right. But where we noticed like with the team, it was about month two and a half to three where the mindset was different because we didn't have that social connection anymore internally, right? Like when you're sitting on the floor, right? And you can hear people selling, you can hear deals closing, right? That brings energy. When things go wrong, you have that immediate support system to bring you up because people know something went wrong. About two and a half, three months in is when people really started to be way more up here and a little bit more of that burnout starts setting in a little bit more of this negativity is the wrong word. But it's like feeling beat up, right? Yeah. Because you didn't have that immediate like social, right? Like if you and I are on the floor and you had this big deal you were expecting to come in and I hear you get off the call where you just heard them say like, yeah, we're gonna push next quarter. And you're like, next quarter? Okay, da da da, and you hang up. I'm right there to be like, oh shit, man. Like, exactly. was that, was that, you know? So that's where the main challenge is gonna come in is like, how do you support people through the ups and downs when they're by themselves? Right, so we've tried to do a lot of things there, but that was the first big challenge that we ran into. Systems, processes, messaging, all that, like we were already system-based, we were fine. This, this was the hard part of keeping people engaged. All right, well, let's talk, let's pull on that thread for a little bit. I wanna get into kind of some other ways, since you have led teams that have been inside and had to worry about this for a long time, some techniques and details, but let, let's pull on this for a little bit. What? So this happens, okay, this happens, you're two and a half months in, and I think there's a lot of people that are still in this, you know, and, and even mm -hmm. me as a, as a CEO, I'm just thinking about my company even, it's like, you know, we're trying all these little things to create serendipity, so you know, talk to me about that, like how did you, how did you kind of take that issue and in, in over the last year, it's been probably a year since that two and a half month mm -hmm. mark, what are some things that you all have done, and, and, and also I want to ask a specific follow-up, which is, the, the word that I use is it, to, to describe that is serendipity. It's, it's how do you mm -hmm. manufacture random, you know, like, oh, man, oh, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. How do you manufacture that? So as you're taking through the journey, anything that you found successful in the inner workings of where teams have done a good job of continuing, you know, at least a piece of that serendipity that happens when you're in person. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny, man, like, you actually, this is gonna sound counterintuitive, but to my leaders, you have to schedule it. Yeah. You have to schedule it. It needs to be on your calendar, on your calendar, Jake, on my calendar. Any yep. of the leaders is on your calendar, reach out to someone you haven't spoken to recently. 
because that like you know people that have worked with me or for me know this like i'm not a, i'm not a social butterfly like i'm not mr like extrovert that's not who who i am but in the office like obviously if i see you i'm chatting with you all those things happen when we went remote it was like it was right on that three month mark i was like there's people i haven't spoken to in m months right especially when your org is a hundred plus people yeah. right like just not even speaking to. So the first is putting it on your calendar. When am I going to, I'm reaching out to someone I haven't spoken to recently. And this doesn't have to be a heavy Zoom call of like, hey, let's, but I was like, hey, been a minute, how's it going? And I, those check-ins, that's the first. Second is, and I worked on this with my managers in a big way, like spiffs and recognition need to be significantly less transactional. Meaning you need to give first more. More often than not, especially with sales teams, like all spiffs are like, if you do this, yeah. then I'll do that. That's a transaction. That's not a relationship, right? If someone has to give for you to give love, that's a transaction. Interesting. So where I was working with my managers, like this month, you have to do something unconditional. Unconditional. Do something for your team that has nothing tied to a result. Just do it. Right. And helping managers think that way of like reward them, recognize them for things. Right. Also, another I'm, I'm going to go super tactically. So that was one. Next one is, again, to the Jakes, to the me's, to the managers of the world. Add to your one on one docs people that need to be shouted out. Right. So who on your team needs to pick me up and who on your team is doing well? And then this is something that I have, generally speaking, I have a no slack rule during meetings and one-on-ones, except for this part of the one-on-one. -on -one. Cause in the one-on-one, -on -one, in the one-on-one, -on -one, I'm like, yo, Rebecca, Jake just said some really cool shit about you. He says like, you've really been working hard this month, like keep it up. So it's in the moment, like that it's those types of things that go a long way that I've seen be more serendipitous than like, yes, that we all did the Zoom happy hours. That was cool for a week and then they sucked, right? Like we've done like the, the lunch and learns, we've done the virtual coffee meetups, like all those things are there. But for the leaders where you can plan serendipity, right? Go into next week, I challenge all y'all. Have coffee with two people next week that you have it or tea if you're Jake, right? Switch over to tea, <laughs> hit them up, hit them up, hit them up yeah. right now and be like, yo, let's catch up Friday. Wanna grab some coffee, like virtually cool. You have to plan it so that it can be serendipitous to the other side. It doesn't have to be serendipitous to you. It needs right, to be serendipitous right, right, right. to them. That's, That's right, because they don't know what's coming, right? You're just hitting up right. after the blue, and to them, it, it feels like that. Um, and how did your managers early on, I mean, how did they respond to that, right? So you've got these people they've been used to, you know, just seeing the, the, the team. Like, how did they respond to it? And, like, were there any, like, roadblocks you all had early on mm -hmm. in getting it more institutionalized? Of, of course, right? Like, because you also – you. <laughs> going fully remote exposed the people that didn't have processes in place, right? If, if you have to, first of all, if you have to be there to get the behavior that you expect, it means you don't have the culture that you need to have. If I have to be on that floor to get the behavior that I expect, something's massively wrong culturally. Second, if you don't have processes in place and then you go remote, yeah, like shit falls apart because you don't know how things were being done. So again, like art quite literally, it, it is a highlight, I don't even know if I can call this a highlight of my career, but it is some, it's one of the most proud moments I've ever had for my team it was April of 2020, right? So we're talking like peak pandemic mm -hmm. right. on like the right uprise. Right into it. Okay, Mar or sorry, April, we did a, unfortunately, just a massive riff, right? Like we sell to doctors in a pandemic. Like we got crushed by yeah. this. Right. And oh, so we went through a riff. It's the pandemic and we went fully remote. And my team, I mean, my God, did they rise to the occasion in that month? Like I like I, I mean, y'all, I don't know if you can see this, like literal goosebumps talking about this. Like they nothing, nothing changed. Like they got after it and they ran their process and they did what they were supposed to do. And like, we didn't hit the number in April, but my God, what am I proud of how they got after it, right? So like behaviorally, process wise, it was fine. This was the hard part. And that's where with managers, that's where they struggled the most is because you couldn't see it anymore, right? Like if, again, if we're on the floor and you walk in and you look like shit, I know something's up. 
and I can pull you aside, like, yo, Jake, like, what's up, man, right? Or I can, he like, the, the subtle things, right? Someone gets on a tough call. <sighs> I can pull you aside, right? Mm -hmm. And be like, hey, like, that, it was the lack of being aware of, like, how people were really feeling that the managers really struggled with. Where are they spending their time? Where are things going wrong? And learning how to observe remotely. Right, which again isn't as hard as we make it sound. How do you observe someone remotely? You Get, turn on the in. camera and you schedule. Like, hey, I'd love to like listen in on a call, or hey, like I'd love. To, could you show me how you're scrubbing those leads again? Like you mentioned, your one-on-one, -on -one, right? So, like again, planning the observation was big, right? The biggest one that I'm now trying to figure out is, you know, for, especially for new reps. So this has been, I would say, my biggest challenge is ramps taking longer. And yeah. you know me, Jake, like I'm, I'm Mr. Coach and Mr. Onboard. Like I built these programs out and we have a very strong program, but one is went full remote ramp is taking longer. Makes sense. Yeah. People aren't retaining information as well. And I think part of that is just when you're not around it 24 seven, it's different when you were a new rep and I had a no hiding rule, right? Again, if anyone's on here, that's worked for me or with me, you know, this. I had a no hiding rule. You were a new rep. You could not hide to make your calls and new reps. Yeah, you, you came know you right? You go to the same shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You go to the conference room, you go make calls. I have people make calls from their car, right? Like that's you hide. Hard. We had a no hiding right. rule. You had to be on the floor because I wanted people to hear you. So right. they could give you that feedback and that encouragement. So I'm trying to figure out better ways to allow that to happen. How could like, literally like I've written down, like, how could I like, live stream everyone's calls at once and put it on Sonos. <laughs> you follow me here? You like this is the best shit crate just in the here? background. Yeah, right. Or good. like, hey, gong, if you're listening or outreach that you're listening, disposition gets set to meeting set. Bow! Blast the call link out to everybody immediately. Here was a win. Listen. Right? Like Write that down. It's like, how do you get people hearing the wins? Because you know this, man. If you're in your own world and you're not winning that day and you're not hearing wins, you think no one's winning. Yeah. So we were doing way more sharing of like wins. But then again, this is the other part of it, the storytelling, right? Like <laughs> my managers know this, like in our SDR channel and our AE channel, like, you know, a deal closes like ding or like we booked a meeting ding. I'm like, God. Goddamn dings. Like it's just distracting all day. Right. Tell, I don't want the ding. I want the story because that's what's missing. Right. Ding, ding, ding. You're seeing all these meetings being hit. In the office, you knew the story because you heard exactly. it. Exactly. Remotely, you don't. So share the story. Who are you talking to? What objection did you get? How did you turn it around? Why did they say yes to the meeting and why are you excited about it? Sharing that. Now people feel like that's part of their win too. So getting way more, um, way more better at one, speaking English, and two, telling stories throughout the day remotely is also a much better way to bring people together. And you guys are doing that in Slack right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that that's interesting. Yeah, we're seeing more and more companies trying to figure out ways to, to integrate some of these these details. And so where do you feel like internally, and then I want to shift and we'll spend a bulk of the time here talking about you know, kind of customer engagement, but I think these internal details, they actually all impact the customer side too, because if I'm sitting in there and I'm in my room by myself, I'm in my room by myself and, you know, I, I don't need to, I, I can motivate myself, you know, but, mm -hmm. but back then, you know, when I was 26, maybe 27, 28, like I definitely fed off of it. Um, and I think that that also is how we start to show up for customers, right? If I've been in that same room, I've ran 30 Zooms and I haven't talked to anyone, you know, they start to just get, shittier you know they just start to get like mm -hmm. are you mailing it in are you, are you are you bringing that heat are you bringing that fire on every call when you don't have that that energy you know to like build from and and i feel like that's that that's the that's the thing i want to go deep on but my last question on, on this piece is um you know as you look forward is the ramp thing that, that you feel like now it's like okay so we've got these little serendipity moments i love that i've took those notes down is ramp now what you see as being, because we're seeing it across our client base too. You know, we're seeing mm -hmm. customers, uh, ramp time is being longer uh, than ever. Um, people struggling to, to ramp candidly and, and almost seeing false negatives and kind of go to market or product market at times because mm -hmm. they ramp their first, you know, 10 or 15, and then they try to ramp to 40. 
and they're just not, they're not like to your point, they don't got the system or process and they're not building the serendipity. Is, is there anything else besides ramp that you see as being, you know, something that all sales leaders need to think about as they you know, kind of continue this year and next? Mm-hmm. So ramp for sure is one to, to consider the ongoing training as well for your team, but it is the, the connection, right? Especially, especially your new remote hires, the ones that were never in the office. The ones that never, you know, never sat down and got the IV drip of the scaled blue or the patient pop green. You know what I'm saying? Like, because when you walk into it too, right? Like, I mean, new hires for us were an event, right? Those started, right? You got the class when you walked through. You had your mentor. You went and got coffee and drinks. We we did a lunch, right? Where like that's where you got to learn yeah. that yeah, I like a tequila at lunch, right? Like that was always my favorite part with the new hire, like lunch, is we went to this place called like Blue Taco in Santa Monica. And like the servers, they they knew us there. They knew me well, right? They'd come over like, you know, and like ask the first AE, like, so what would you like to drink? And there was always this, can, can I can I get a drink, what right? And I'm like, <laughs> like, all around, right? Like, you know, so they get, they get that. The people yeah. that are hired remotely, they've never gotten that. They've never, so you have to be very intentional with building the relationships there those connections are really important because that's what builds loyalty do they really understand your founder story do they really understand the customer that you're serving right because this is also with those things remotely you don't hear about the customer wins as much so there's less of a belief in the company you have to be way more proactive with sharing the wins across the company too so people stay bought into the mission so I think that's something else to pay attention to is like, are you sharing the company wide wins, the customer wins? So they feel like momentum is going well. So I'd say ramp, serendipity, recognition. I, also to just mindset, like we got to remember, I talked about this a couple months ago. This isn't just selling remote, right? This is selling during a pandemic, right? This is selling losing loved ones. This is selling not knowing if your parents are going to be okay. This is selling not seeing your parents in two years, right? Like, I mean, we were riffing about just at the beginning here, right? But like my brother just tested, you know, positive last week, right? Like, and then it was around me and my family. So not only am I worried about my brother, but I'm also worried about my two children, my wife, myself. Oh, and I'm trying to lead a team. Our people are going through that too. I have people that yeah. lost people this year, right? And so like, it's not just selling remotely. You got to remember what people are going through. And again, be proactive that they're taking care of their mental health. Give them the day, y'all. Give them the take. Give them two days. Check in, right? We added this to our one-on-one docs. How are you taking care of yourself this week? Like it's on our one-on-one docs. How are you taking care of yourself this week? Because we know we're not great at taking care of ourselves if no one's checking in. So please Mm -hmm. be proactive with this side. You have people that are struggling right now. Take care of the person. That's very important. It can't just be metrics and dials all day long. Like there's a person hitting those metrics and dials and being proactive there is very important. Oh, man, what a great reminder. I mean, hopefully for everyone listening now or in the recording of uh, just of that component. And it's, it's actually a really good transition too to start to talk about the customer behavior because mm-hmm. it's the same thing for your customers, right? Like, yes. you know, when you're sitting there and if it's always like your point, Bant, medic qualify qualify um you don't you know you're not thinking about that you know think okay what's Mm -hmm. this person going through like what or you know what could they be going through and am am i approaching it that way or just again am i in my own head my own my own head you know it's also again i think that's what you know to be great at sales you've got to be able to be there and be present with that person you know Mm -hmm. so no checking emails things like that as well too and so I've got a couple questions for you there. You know, some of the things I, I can think for me, at least, I'm just kind of like looking at some of my notes here is, you know, it's like there used to be a lot and you, you've got a ton of inside experience. You know, it's like when you're in person, I think some of the focus things are just easier. It's like I, I obviously can't just be texting or on my computer in front of you. Right. Um, I, I, or like not not maintaining eye contact. Right. Um, all mm-hmm. things would be very odd. Um you know, as you think about it. So, so I, in my, this is my opinion is I think engagement's harder for people to sustain, right? Even if you have been in inside sales, um, you know, with the screens in front of them. And so I, my first question here around the customer side is, you know, what are some of the things that your customers do? So we talked about keeping our people engaged. Let's flip that and talk about our customers engaged. Are there, mm-hmm. are there different tips or things that your, your teams do, whether it's maybe, maybe we'll start with like before the meeting, 
or during the first meeting or sets of meetings to get people to engage or to 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 raise the level of focus or um, you know energy on that call. Mm-hmm. So the the fastest tip I can give you here is ask questions that force them to stay engaged and you yep. train them of the pattern. If I'm asking you questions that you can't give me yeses and yeah, okays to. Close versus open, yep. Right, I have to pay attention. And I don't, cause human beings, we have a very strong anti-stupid looking meter where That's we never right. wanna look stupid. And so if you're asking me thoughtful questions and you ask me two or three in a row, now, like, truthfully, as a buyer, as a person, like, shit, I better pay attention. Mm-hmm. Like, otherwise, I'm going to look I'm getting stupid. called on. Right? right. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm going to look dumb. Right? So, like, that's the first. It's like, if you're asking, so we call it, you know, make them hold it questions. Right? So the old school, like, selling technique, right? Like, if I can get you to hold this, if I can get you to hold it, you're significantly less likely to give it back. Right? And, man, you ever go to, like, to the bazaars, right? Or, like, the farmer's market. If I can get you to hold that flower, you're buying that flower. Like you're not gonna give it back. And so we call it make them hold it questions, right? So as opposed to like, you know, all right, like does that make sense? Horrible, worst horrible question. question. Kill worst that question. question. Anybody yeah, listening, right. does that make sense? People don't wanna <laughs> seem stupid, so they go, yeah, it makes sense. Right, and but now that's immediate disengagement. Oh, that's all you're gonna be asking me? <laughs> all right, slack. Yeah, Here yeah, I makes call, a ton of sense. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Versus like, like, Nope, I'm good. That's what no like what metric what metrics would you put on this dashboard? What metrics would you put on this dashboard? Whoa. So now you're making me one, pay attention to the dashboard. Two, you're now making me f- actually visualize my metrics within the dashboard, and now I have to communicate. I am now holding it in my head. Right? Something we say at patient bot. Which keywords would you want to show up for? How would you yeah. want this to look? What If you wanted to attract people, what do your patients say, right? You get them to those types of questions make me engage. That's the first. Second, to all like my technical, not even technical, just all like my product, product people, you are missing a massive opportunity to hand over control of the mouse. You want to talk about keeping someone engaged, have them control the slides. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, this is, it's the same techniques, that? man. I, that's really it. <laughs> hey, I would guess one percent uh, of people are doing that. It would be my okay. so something like follow that. me here, yeah. Like, oh, I guarantee it. How you know how many demos I've sat through this year? You how many any of them have ever given me control of the screen? Yeah, none, uh, none. not one. And even more powerful, give me control of the product. If you are in a demo environment. All right, KD, so I'm going to give you control of the mouse. Can you move that for me real quick, left and right? Also, quick pause. It is creating the dynamic of teacher and student. Jake, shake that for me real quick. Can I see that your mouse is moving? Follow and lead. Follow and lead. So we're also creating the dynamic of you are following, I am leading, right? So now I have control. Okay, so we talked about these metrics. So let me show you how easy it is actually to get your metrics in there. So go ahead and click that left arrow there for me real fast. Okay, that's gonna drop down, and now I want you to link. Okay, so now what? They're engaged, they are using the product. Even for my people that don't have product-led growth options, they're using it, they're feeling it, they're going to remember it, and now they are holding it. Give control up. Talk about engagement, right? Like, there, that's a massive engagement. Dude, nobody is doing this. So this is interesting. This is one that hasn't come up ever, KD. I got to be honest, man, in my conversations. And it's such a no-brainer. It goes back to the make them hold it, right? Like, yes. and there, there's so much, there's there's a great story. I'll just tell it real quick. Of a corning glassware, you probably know this one. There's a corning glassware salesperson, which is basically this people used to come door to door and sell you glassware. And so they got to the national convention. And this guy was number one by a ton of, a ton of you know, like places. And they said, well, what do you do? It's like, well, when I get in there, I take a hammer. And I hit that I hit it with the hammer, and they can see that it's you know durable, et cetera. And so then at the, the, the convention, they train everyone else on the same technique. Yep. Come back the next yep. year. He's by far number one again. And they're like, well, what do you? And this is a true story. This is like an anecdote. Mm-hmm. Come back again. Um, well, how are you still number one? He's like, I gave them the hammer and I let them mm-hmm. hit it. So it's such a it's a very 
classic thing that I think we've just forgotten about. Um, because because in sales, I feel like now, KD, right? It's like you don't think rep. You don't think it's all contained for you. You ask these questions. You don't. You go through the thing. I feel like it's that it's that this overarching drive for efficiency versus effectiveness and Mm -hmm. that i see us almost dumbing it down and training this type of behavior out of reps because because we're too nervous about what they might do well well see it's not they're not mutually exclusive i can create a phenomenal process that appears serendipitous and Mm -hmm. organic that is very structured on the back end, right? And there's companies starting to do this in product-led growth. There's companies starting to make these things available for people, right? Reprise is one, right? We're like, you can create a demo environment for that buyer, but it is, it's taking them through it. And what this also allows, right? Y'all, as pitch yourself as a buyer here real quick. So you're on this demo. I give control over and I say, Jake, where would you like to start? You have control now. You have... Yeah. Where would you like to start? And I go, well, what's what's this little dashboard thing over here? Cool. Let's go in it. Go ahead and click on that for me here. Let me show you how this works, right? Like that, oh man, it's like it fucking fired up over this shit because it works. <laughs> it, and it works no so one, well. No one else, no one is doing this. Nobody is doing it, right? Like truth, and funny enough, like, <laughs> we're almost almost there, but I don't even have some product things to actually be able to do this with, right? Like we're using like, you know, web control and websites and yeah, things exactly. like that, but we're asking these types of questions. Like, where would you want this button, right? Like, how would you structure this? What, how, what, what would really grab your patient's attention? You're asking those types of questions, but if you can give control over, y'all, that is memorable, right? And I'm getting that feeling of being in control, that, right? And then here's the other one I'll talk on, and y'all can probably hear it right now enthusiasm Mm -hmm. enthusiasm y'all might i could be complete i could be making all this shit up right now y'all would have no idea because i'm speaking about it so passionately with so much enthusiasm you're like yes yes i guess i guess guess this is right jake Jake, everyone's excited i guess i should do that (laughs) <laughs> right like that enthusiasm you have to be like this is what is interesting right so you know are you familiar with mirror neurons jake right we i think we actually have talked about this during golfing yeah. right like if with in person when you smile the mirror neurons yeah, somewhere match that's that, right yeah. right it matches it doesn't work the same over this they've also studied this now it's different you don't get the same neural um mirroring over zoom as you do in person right and that's why you have to actually be over the top, right? Over the top enthusiastic. You know, truthfully, like someone sitting outside my office right now with like, he's crazy. Like, why is he in? Like, yeah, there's so much like, energy coming out. Why are you out. shouting all the time? Right, <laughs> same, right? Like poking in, like what, what is he doing? You That enthusiasm has to be there, especially because, you know, face to face, right? What was it? 30% is the word. And then the rest is tone and body language, something oh, like yeah, that. I heard, yeah, I heard it's more than that, like 85 right. or something like that. Yeah. Think, right. Okay. Well, over Zoom, it's almost all tone and that's pretty much, it's all tone because the word is the word. Body language, you don't get to see it all, especially if I'm a little square in the corner. It doesn't matter like if I walked in there with all the swag in the world and I take a power stance and I'm kicking my legs back and you can tell like I know... No, like I need to do this, right? And so mm-hmm. this is all full circle. Practice this with your reps. How often are you focused on their tone? Or are you just focused on what they're saying, right? Because it is, Jake mentioned this. It's so easy. You've been sitting in your room for 12 hours. You're running the same demo. Mm-hmm. You just got that no from a, you know, a, a commit that's going to push. No one knows that it's already pushed. So you've got to have to let that people know you're sitting in that. And now you're about to do a demo. Mm-hmm. Right. Like giving people a routine of like how to get in the mindset, and how to bring that enthusiasm. Right. I listened to a demo just last week and I stopped it in discovery. Stopped it. Stopped it. Asked her, hey, started listening to your demo. Just want to give some feedback. I don't need to listen to the rest of this demo. I don't need to listen to the rest of this demo because I already know what's happening here. I want mm-hmm. you to listen to yourself real quick. Does this sound like you care? Does this sound like you're excited for them? Does it sound like you've been helping people do this your whole career? Ah, no. That's what I want to fix first. 
How do you do no that? No tactics. That's, that's, this is perfect, Kevin. How do we... So again, I think that this is it because this is exactly what I see. There's this energy and enthusiasm that, you know, and again, and, and you probably, you know, how many of the demos you get, did the, did the person get you excited? Like, oh, Never. I can't wait for this. So, so how do you do that? And I'll, I've got some, you know, some of my own kind of things I've mm -hmm. done in the past, but how do you, you know, because I think that like, what you're saying is so spot on that if you want to create engagement in this Zoom world, I love that stats around it being different, the, the mirror match, where again, I could mm -hmm. used to bring my hands in closer and you would do it. But again, in a Zoom, you can't really tell that I leaned in Does closer. It? You know, if, I, if I start talking a little bit softer, you'll just turn the volume up. <laughs> so like, it used or to be, like I can't hear you, Jake. I yeah, can't, can't hear, hear I can't hear you. You're on, you're on nope. mute. You're on, you're on, you're on, you're on mute. Um, so how do you do it, man? So how do you start to think about getting teams to, 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 to get their energy up if, you know, they're not the most charismatic person, right? Mm -hmm. and that, which I definitely don't think you have to be. Yeah. So it's, there's a difference between being charismatic and being a professional. This is, this is where I'm going to say, like, as salespeople, we don't own this enough, Right. You are a professional. This is your job, right? You wouldn't go to like an actor or a singer and be like, well, like, you know, I'm a little bit more introverted. So like, I'm not going to bring the energy I need to for this. If you like, I'm going to just say this, this is going to sound blunt. I don't care. You know my style. I'm getting old and salty now too, right? Like if you can't get enthused to sell what you're selling to that prospect, get out. I don't care. Notice though, this is not about extrovert or introvert this is about right. enthused with the prospect it does not take much to dial it up two notches that's all i'm asking for here right but if this conversation was like well yeah you know if one you know one way to engage is you know you could give them control over the the, the mouse you could do that yes um i mean i guess another way to engage would be you know to check in from from time to time you know ask them some some good questions um, it, it wouldn't have the impact. And but I think and we I can just say got an email immediately. <laughs> exactly. Like, you had to take I a drink. Know, yeah. I immediately opened up Slack. <laughs> okay. No. And like this, this actually is fun because you know, Jake, you and I hang out socially, right? Like yeah. socially. And am I like this now. raw? I mean, we good, right. We are friends. We're, friends we're good now. friends now. It's now okay. on record. Am, on record. am I? Am I raw? Raw? Yelling no. and screaming? No. no, that's not who I am. But in this moment, because of who the audience is. You bring that, right? And so that's the first is one, as leadership, you have to talk about it. You have to talk about tone with your team consistently. You have to bring it up. Here's what good yeah. sounds like. Oh, anyone that, I don't know how many people are on live. It could be one person, it could be no people. I don't care. Hear what I just said there. This is what good sounds like. Not what to say to be good. Here's what good sounds like. Listen to this tone. Listen to this energy. Give feedback on tone because that is everything remotely. It's everything practice it okay again let's go super tactical here we do two things to practice tone one we do speed training two we do over the top okay i'm gonna give you all okay, straight yeah, tactics yeah, yeah. here say so one speed training make them say the script as fast as they can for 90 seconds straight 90 seconds straight you say it as fast as you possibly can chunk by chunk man we could do this shit live right so say the open is like you know Hey, Jake, this is KD over at Patient Pop. I was just on your website. I was hoping you could help me out real quick. You got a sec? We'll call that the, the script. Okay, we go 90 seconds. Hey, Jake, this is KD from Patient Pop. I was just on your website. I was hoping you could help me out real quick. Hey, KD, Jake, this is KD from Patient Pop. I was just on your website. I was hoping you could help me out real quick. Hey, Jake, this is KD from Patient Pop. I was really hoping you could help me out. Oh, Jake, and one, what this does, I have video clips of this, by the way, okay. of a room full of people. It's on fire. You can't hear anything, right? And it's loud. That brings energy up, and you can do that over Zoom as well. It forces you. When you go fast, it forces up energy. This is actually why I like, don't love it when people tell salespeople you got to slow down because you know what people do to slow down? They bring their tone They bring down. it down to a little bit that's of deep fine, but that's exactly it. There's a difference between slow and you're right. A lot of people, they can't go slow and – bring the energy being right it's yeah. different things right so that's the first the second is it's overacting right we call it the billy mays drill i'm gonna make you go billy mays style yeah, that's right i'm gonna make you, you go billy mays style billy mays is my friend oh yeah sorry yeah we gotta bring it we gotta bring it back who'd be another good one billy mays um i guess you could maybe tony robbins a little bit ish yeah, right you make them go over 
the flex yes, steel the flex guys. steel, like <laughs> that you make you them go drive over flight. the top. Right. Hey, so first we're going to start with your SEO. Did you know that SEO is important? Because without SEO, you will never show up. In fact, of the matter is buyers trust the SEO rankings over they do the ad rankings because they know that ad was paid to be there. Whereas to rank means you're more likely. Can you believe you go over the top? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. Tell me more. But, but, but wait, there's more. So the, the point, again, these are tactics, y'all. You can drill on this. You really can, right? Ask anybody that's ever been in acting, right? And they'll tell you this. You have to overact in person to get it to come across the, on the screen. So what feels over the top mm-hmm. to you is probably exactly what you need to have it come across the way you want it to on the screen, right? And then again, to managers, directors, VPs, Listen with your eyes closed for once. Listen with your eyes closed. Listen. Shut your eyes and listen. How does this sound? Does it make me feel anything? Can I feel anything? Do they sound excited to be here? And I really, I really hope people are not, you know, missing the message here. This is not about being an extrovert. This is not about being a raw, raw, bro, hypey type. That's not what this is. This is bringing energy into your voice. That makes it sound like you're actually excited to help the person that you're talking to, plain and simple. Yeah, and and I and for a lot of you out there, I'll give you kind of a <clears throat> how I think about this. There's a book I read. I think it was 26 or 20, 25 or 26 at the time. It's called How to Make People Like You in 90 Seconds or Less. Mm. And what it talked about was this idea of a trigger mechanism. You know, something that you could use because what I call that is you got to get up for it. You know, you got to get up, like you said. This isn't necessarily your default, but you know, when it comes to certain times, you got to do it. You need to get up. You mm-hmm. need you're on stage or whatever it is. And so for me, I developed this trigger mechanism that was a light switch. And so what would happen is in certain parts of the call, because I already had the the energy. For me, it was more about leaning. With, having making things uncomfortable when they need to get uncomfortable and so i hear it i hear a twinge in their pitch i literally i my i picture a light switch and i lean in and i ask the tough questions and and the other thing i'll call out so so think about that for you you don't have to get up 24 7 that's what you're saying is it's not about being Mm -hmm. over the top 24 7 it's about to your point the job is sales it's transferring enthusiasm And if you're not interested and you don't love what you're selling or you don't really believe that it's going to make an impact or you don't understand the impact, I don't think you can ever be a top performer. And then, and and then the other thing I'll call out is what Kevin said about closing your eyes. I used to do that all the time. And the other thing I would think about it when I closed my eyes, Kevin, especially when I was a rep is I I was painting the picture and I used to make Mm -hmm. my teams, you, you can use this one. They used to have to go through the entire demo. They could not say the word. So it was a career builder. You couldn't say career builder. You couldn't say, you couldn't mention a feature name. So you had to go through and paint a picture of the impact and what this would do. And, and I think that that idea of closing your eyes, even if you're a rep or a leader is so valuable and, and, and be focused and just, okay, so am I, am I really painting this picture? Am I really telling a story or am I just going through the motions and clicking around and talking about features, but that's not, people don't buy features, right? They buy the outcome from the story. Um, yeah. And so that really hits home for me. And what one thing really that he touched on there too that's important digitally versus not, right? One, ask them to turn their cameras on. That's number one. Ask them to turn their cameras on if they're not. How do you ask that question, Kevin? Is there a way that you that you te- you're, you train mm-hmm. the team to ask that? Um, yeah, just say, hey, would love to have your camera on so we can have a closer to real conversation. It's, it's everything that this is just tone, right? Like when you make it sound like it's a bigger deal. Um, Jake, uh, could you please uh, turn your, your camera on? I would really appreciate it. Like, man, what's this dude trying to do, man? <laughs> trying to see my house? The fuck? <laughs> He's like, hey, right, like, you know, hey, Jake, I got my camera on. I want you to like, you know, see and, and kind of feel the, the enthusiasm I'm bringing here. Would, would love it if you could turn your camera on as, as well. Would that be okay? Oh, no, I got kids in the background. Da, da, da. I was like, hey, totally get it. That's fine. But here's the key. There's two reasons why I'm saying this. One... <laughs> you know this to be true. Where do you tend to look now on Zoom? They've studied this shit too. Who do we look at? Ourselves? ourselves. We look at ourselves, which causes us to miss the subtle nuances of our buyer. We're looking at ourselves while other people are talking, right? Or I'm looking That's at the camera. Key. That's the other thing, right? right? It's like for a lot of you, if you're using a second party, like a, a better camera. Right, same. I got a camera here that I'm looking, looking at, at, right? at the camera. Because if I'm looking at you, I'm actually looking here. 
right? But this is right. you know, the camera, and the camera's pretty damn close to like eye level, but still there's a, a, a mm -hmm. nuance. Man, that's such a great call out. Yeah. Honestly, Kevin, I hadn't, I hadn't really thought yeah. about it that way, but I right. love that. But I'm going to finish it out here, right? So one, so you can see them. You can see them and you need to be looking at them. This is so, so important. This is so much harder. This is all new for us. We are not used to having a mirror in front of us 24 hours a day. And that's what this is. We are all way more narcissistic than we ever realized, right? Because when we can see ourselves, that's where we focus. <laughs> oh my God, how okay? do they look? But like, here's the second part of it. Because if you can't see them, then you have to listen. I hope y'all caught what Jake said. I hear a twinge in their voice. This is also the problem. When you're looking at yourself while the other person is talking, you're not actually hearing them because you're looking at yourself. If you are looking at them or again, eyes closed, right? You're looking down, eyes closed so you can listen and you hear that twinge, light switch. Ooh, I heard it, right? So it taught me how like, how's that vendor been working with you recently? Oh gosh, like just, you know, it's been okay. And you hear that, oh, it's like, whoa, whoa, hold on, Jake. Did I hear, did I hear a little bit of a, ah, oh, gosh in there? What, what, that didn't sound good. Tell me a little bit more about what's causing that. Not looking at yourself while they're talking will make you a better listener. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give y'all like tactical, tactical shit. If you're looking at yourself while they're talking, you're missing out on those nuances. You're missing so out hard. on those subtleties and it's over. And everyone think about that. Can you position your camera and your Zoom setup. I've been thinking a lot about, like I've been playing with different setups for that exact reason that, um, you know, the, the advantage I have, and I'm sure you feel this way too, is that I remember, you know, I grew up in inside sales first too. So back in the late 2000s, there was video conferencing, but you, it wasn't normal, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, where's what go to meeting, right? It was like starting to come up. And so I had to learn to me, picking up on tone is like second nature. I don't, mm -hmm. I can almost not need to, like, because I've done thousands of calls where I only had a phone and a headset right. to where right. I can like literally listen for the nuances of like, you know, usually the, the biggest one for me is like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. That one for me is the number one trigger of they're not bought in. That is mm -hmm. the most, that to me is like, they're yeah. giving me the like, oh yeah, oh. oh. And when someone goes up to that register, I'm picking up yeah. like, oh, well, tell me, like, what, what in particular, again, open it, what in particular yeah. are you excited about that you can see having a big impact? And, putting and to together. my leaders, to yeah. my leaders on here, like the, you know, people will hear this and go, yeah, but how do you do that? And that's why I love this shit, because we'll get into the how. When's the last time you listened to a call with a rep, paused it and said, what did you hear? Not what did they say? Okay, listen to this, listen to this. Pause. What did you hear? What did you hear? And you work on this with them. You can train this, you can teach people this, but you have to be intentional with it, right? You just asked the, you know, the, the buy-in questions. Like, so, you know, if all this sounds good, right? Before we talk price, like, is this something you even think will solve the problem? And they go, um, yeah. Pause, <laughs> boom, immediate. Pause, immediately. Not what did they say? What did you hear? Because what do most reps do like when, when they hear, uh, yeah, just add it to commit, <laughs> right? It's like, no, 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 no. What did you hear? Listen for a second. Does that sound like a strong yes? And by the way, this is built into our training. This is what a strong yes sounds like. This is what a deflection yes sounds like. And we work on these things, right? And you can, it's just that attention to detail. You have to bring that up to the forefront all the time. You just have to. Uh, okay. Yeah. And I, and for me, as I think about this in particular, I think again, to your point, it's just, man, this used to be like, they're not, that used to be, and I'm not going to go back and like want the times from your, but part of this is just when we look at our, our onboarding plans, et cetera, just like, what are we addressing? You know, what are, what are the mm -hmm. things we're talking about? Are we so focused on again, the qualification questions or are we more focused on the engagement and, and how our people show up? And I feel like that's the big trend is that, more and more teams I see are, are not focusing enough on the human aspects and the quality and the ways to interact with people versus the questions mm -hmm. I'm supposed to ask. Not that you can't ask this, mm -hmm. you should ask the same questions almost every call, yeah. but the questions are very me focused. Me, mm -hmm. I want to know budget and timeline. You don't even know really why you're asking it. You're like, my boss told me yeah. I was supposed to ask this and ask yeah. like who the other people are, but you don't really understand it. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so, so I, I've got kind of a, just a, a quick family of questions I want to ask here before we wrap yeah. up around tech. Mm -hmm. So is there any technology? There's a tool that, you know, we've, we've been flirting with it and, and I want to continue to use it more. It's called Mural, M-U-R-A-L. That's like this kind of collaborative whiteboarding type engagement. Um, you know, like engagement platform where again, like you can have them, you can invite them in. There's like sticky notes and some other things. So I, I think I thought that that's cool. I still don't know if I, we've got it nailed on how to incorporate it with all of our clients. Um, but, but what, so again, turning it over to them, that's obviously a tool, right? Or I just mm -hmm. assume kind of take control. Yep. Are there other tools that your team's using to help to make this process more impactful? Um, so right now, no, I would say like, obviously like Zoom, get the paid version of Zoom so that you can do things and like hand over control of the mouse and things like that. Um, the spotlight thing, I don't even know what it's called, like how to make your um, mouse a spotlight. What is that called? I don't remember what it's called, but there's a tool, I'll, I'll find it afterwards. Like there's a tool that, you know, makes your mouse a spotlight that helps again, narrow things in right of like where to focus is good um a tool that i've been like looking into and actually i've spoken with a couple times is called reprise where you can like yeah. build a custom demo environment for like your people and you can even send it to them like you can proactively send it out and be like yo like you can do this and then also to like truth like video for everything Video, like, you know, I, you know, you know me, I'm a big proponent of video, you know, yeah. I use Vidyard heavily, but we use it everywhere, right? So follow up, the proposal, the commitment, post sale, right? Bringing that human element in again, because this is actually interesting. I was talking about this um, with a couple people, this is a month ago. The One of the things face-to-face, -face, so Jake, did you, did you do any selling face-to-face? -face? I've done both. Oh, I just nice. prefer inside. Okay. All right. So imagine this scenario. Imagine the scenario. We get to the end. We agree to terms and you go, awesome, welcome to the family. And they won't shake your hand. And they go, no, no, we're good, but we're excited. And you go, awesome, let's shake on it. They're like, no, that, that's okay, but we'll, we'll sign the contract. How would that feel? Uh, I'd be like, damn. This thing is not happening. <laughs> I'm like, right? this guy's like, gonna even, start kicking the can for the next month and I'm gonna right? start chasing him down. The subtle action of actually shaking hands on something, right, was a micro commitment. It was a, hey, we are agreeing to this, right? So doing some of those things digitally as well, like how can you reward people immediately after a purchase? What's the digital handshake? What's the virtual handshake of like, hey, Jake, it's stupid. Y'all are gonna laugh at this. Don't care, right? Jake, we in? Yeah, we're in. Can you give me a virtual? F can, can you give me this real quick? Can you give yeah. me this real quick? Let's go. Let's go nux. Give me some nux, right? Y'all laugh. Oh my God, that's stupid cheesy. Then don't do it. First of all, don't care. Doesn't hurt me at all. But second, it is a ver it's a, a micro commitment of like, hey, we're going to mirror what used to be done in person, right? So little things like that can go a long ways as well. Yeah, I, and I think that that's an easy one, right? To just say, and mm -hmm. whatever that is for you, maybe if you don't, I think you can create that for whatever feels like good right. for you as well too, no matter no matter what it is. Um, so is there any, again, so like, it sounds like Zoom and you're using some different Zoom. features with Zoom. Um, like you yeah. said, Reprise, if, if, for those of you who don't know, it allows you to create these really cool custom demos. Another one called Partner Stack, or no, not Partner Stack, Demo Stack. Um, that's doing something similar. I'm really big on those tools too, Kevin, because I could actually send that to you ahead of time and allow right. you to consume the way that you want to consume, which I think is the direction we're heading. So, mm -hmm. all right, man, everyone. I mean, we had a few hundred people that have popped in uh, here or there. We've got about 20 right now. So last final takeaway, final takeaway, selling in Zoom. Um, if I'm a rep out there, and then I'll make you give two. If I'm a rep out there, mm -hmm. something I can do to, today. If I'm a leader out there, something I can do for my team today. So first, so the rep, I'm gonna give you two fast ones because the first one's relatively short. Enthusiasm. Check your tone. Check your tone, right? How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Get into mode. Whatever it right, takes right, right. for you to get ready, get into mode so that enthusiasm comes across. That's the first. Second, engagement. Ask engaging questions. Ask them, make them hold it questions. How would you? Where would you put? What would you do here? If this broke, what would you do? Who else would use this? Get, ask questions that make them picture using it in their mind. That is something that you can go do today, no matter what the product is, no matter what it is. 
form some questions that make them picture using it. That's on the rep side. On the leadership side, one, do those things that I just talked about, build trainings around what those questions could look like and how to do it. But then two, I would say really start listening for tone and really start continue to check in on your people, right? Check in on your people. How are your people doing? Make sure that they're doing okay up here and find ways to recognize and reward better. This is still one of the areas I'm still trying to grow as a leader. That's not where my brain goes. Recognition and rewards is not where I spend my time. It's even more important and you just have to remind yourself to do it. So train on tone, get those make them hold it questions built out. Take care of your people. That'd be my advice for the leaders. I love that. And again, you use some words here I'd written down. What does this sound like? What did you hear? And just think mm-hmm. about as opposed to what you said. And I think yes. that, to, that to me, I think was a big, um, I think a really interesting takeaway, I hope for a lot of people here. So Kevin, big thank you. I appreciate you joining, man. Um, I know people here in the comments have got a ton of value out of this. And um, yeah, man, what's latest and greatest with you? What can we, what, what's, what's the cool new thing you're up to? Oh man, I don't even know. I'm just trying to change the world one cold call at a time, baby. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do is, you know, I still chase this vision of a perfect sales team, and you know, I know I'll never get there because we as humans are are just not perfect. We are very fallible, but it's what I chase. It's what I go after. So I don't know, man. Right, just trying to finish out this year, get into the next year, which sounds a lot like last year. Right, just trying to finish this year and get into the next year. But you know, I got some stuff cooking on on the back burner right now. So we'll see when I'm ready to let the world know about all that. Cool. All right. Well, I like to hear that, man. So stay tuned. Obviously, follow KD. A lot of you probably already do, but. Kevin, I appreciate it, man. Uh, we'll catch yeah. up on text so we can go and uh, what do you call it? Hit the links. Uh, hit, hit the let's links. Let's go, man. Let's we'll go. do it. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah, of course, man. Have a great one, everyone.